Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of our Lunchtime Learning webinar series. Um, thanks for joining us on this uh, gray day. Uh, my name is Brendan Woodruff. I'm the co-chair of the Green New York Operations and Engagement Subcommittee. A couple housekeeping things before we get started today. This webinar is being recorded and it will be uh, posted on the Green New York website afterwards. Uh, we have a library there where you can go back and watch all of our webinars uh, and you can register for future ones as well. Uh, and we will have, uh, we will take questions. Uh, what we'll do is if you have questions during the webinar, please type them into the chat box and at the end of the webinar, uh, we'll get them over to Kate. Um, we always leave a decent amount of time and get to the questions, so do type them in as we go along. A um, couple quick announcements here. Our next uh, webinar is going to be on Tuesday, March 10th, and it's on climate-friendly air conditioning and refrigeration, so that's getting into some of the super pollutant um, gases that you might have heard about that might be in an air conditioner or refrigeration unit and how to avoid those. Um, so that's a pretty uh, important topic there as we talk about climate change. And uh, Green Your Commute Day is coming up. Uh, it's going to be on Friday, May 15th. Uh, and as we get closer to Earth Week, we'll have more information on that, but please put it on your calendars. And without further ado, uh, I'm going to hand it over to Kate McCardle from the Pollution Prevention Institute for today's presentation. Perfect. Thanks so much, Brendan. I'm uh, happy to be here and excited to dive in uh, to this webinar today for choosing safer products on behalf of uh, DEC and the New York State Pollution Prevention Institute. Um, today, if you want to just put up the agenda, Brendan, um, we do have, I'll just talk briefly about the New York State Pollution Prevention Institute. I'm noticing the S is out of that overview there, so don't Google NYP2I. <laughs> it is NYSP2I. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do here at P Pollution Prevention, but then really dive in to um, choosing safer products, um, both related to green cleaning and uh, uh, personal care products, as well as at the very end, uh, talk a little bit about some other home products um, that you'll find. Um, before I start any uh, uh, presentations about these items, um, if you're just getting uh, to looking at your products and choosing safer items for your families um, or in your offices or wherever it may be um, that you're interested in making this transition, um, Really just to remind everybody to take one day at a time, it can be certainly overwhelming um, researching and Googling all of this information. So hopefully uh, we've made it very easy to kind of start um, and provided a quick jumping off point, uh, but P2I is definitely here to provide one more resource. So uh, next slide, Brendan. The Pollution Prevention Institute, uh, for those of you are, who are not familiar with us, we are located at RIT um, at the Rochester Institute of Technology. Um, we are provided about a little under $4 million a year in New York State funding from the Environmental Protect Protection Fund that is administered through D, uh, the Department of Environmental Conservation, and we work very closely with the Pollution Prevention Unit there at DEC. Um, we, are, we were established, as I said, 11 years ago in, in 2008, and since we've started um, really with the goal of providing sustainability resources and um, services directly to businesses, communities, and municipalities across New York State, our focus areas um, have really expanded while our base is really uh, with uh, small to medium-sized manufacturers um, and looking at sustainability assessments and uh, supply chain. Um, we've also done te technology commercial, commercialization through our Green Technology Accelerator program for many years as well. In the last couple of years, we've expanded the food waste diversion program through our sustainability food program, program or resources and, and program um, and have really uh, done a lot in that area. My role at the Pollution Prevention is in outreach and education, so attempting to take as much resources as, as we do all of that great work um, with our partners across New York State, uh, getting it out to, to residents and communities and municipalities. Uh, we also have research and development dollars um, that go to our partner universities and are working um, uh, very closely with the state on emerging contaminants, and some of which we'll talk about a little bit today, P P PFOA and 1,4-dioxane. Uh, go ahead and... 
turn the slide. Um, there's our network. So uh, we certainly don't do that alone. I mentioned the universities that we work with, uh, Clarkson University, Binghamton, um, Cornell University, and RPI, but also very closely with Manufacturing Extension Partnership um, to be able to utilize um, their networks to get our, our work out and to work directly with New York State companies. Um, next slide, Brendan. So our work, um, as I mentioned, um, is directly with these companies. This is just a slide to show um, a little bit about when we actually are doing direct one-on-one -on -one, um, services with a, a company or a municipality. Um, uh, not only uh, do we provide some support financially, um, we also are creating and, um, and uh, making sure that we, when we close out projects, are collecting metrics um, so that reporting is, uh, can be shared out not only uh, with DEC, um, but providing the um, outputs and the, and the deliverables from our projects um, in the form of case studies and sharing um, with New York State residents. Next slide, Brendan. So today, uh, while you're all here, uh, we're going to dive right into household cleaners. Um, so really, uh, when, when uh, DEC asked um, for this presentation, uh, recognizing that this is really for um, uh, state resources and, and looking at how people in their home um, can make small but very significant changes. Um, we're going to start with just cleaning our houses, which of course um, I'm sure is everybody's favorite thing to do. Uh, I know I, I, uh, one of the, the best recommendations I've received from folks is just uh, to use less, less products. Um, I'm wondering if that also includes less cleaning. Um, unfortunately, it does not. <laughs> Next slide, Brendan. Um, so when we're looking at um, cleaning products, um, we, we want to make sure that um, we're looking at the safer products, and, and what we're what we're looking at on this slide is not only um, products that are safe um, uh, for our bodies, but also uh, products that are um, safe for the environment. So some of the concerns with products is that, um, and they're right up there on the slide. Um, we we do know that some of the products that we use can irritate skin, nose, throat, and um, our eyes. Um, certainly. Um, some of you may have heard of something called endocrine disruptors. Um, endocrine disruptors are things that would interfere um, or mimic block hormones. Um, we will talk a little bit about products that may include endocrine disruptors on this slide or in this presentation. They all also may contribute or um, cause um, asthma. Um, one of the things and the challenges that you'll see um, is that uh, on, the, on the last bullet there is that um, we may not understand or have an ability to find out which chemicals are on our products. So we really need to kind of back up a little bit and understand the regulation um, that, that relates to cleaners. Right now, um, uh, we do not have a full disclosure of chemicals on um, household cleaners. I know this is something that the DEC and our state um, policymakers are working on, um, but there are regulations to understand um, that, that are listed on um, our, our cleaning products. So, if, uh, Brendan, you could go to the next slide really quickly. Um, looking at cleaning product labels, there is some information that you can see um, that um, require that cleaning products are required um, to be on the label right now. Uh, right now, uh, per regulations, the name and the business of the manufacturer has to be on a cleaning product as well as a common and usual name of certain chemicals, signal words, as well as any precautionary measures to follow. Um, so if a product is um, either toxic, danger, warning, or, or caution, you'll see those labels um, and, and the description of how they determine that those products um, may be toxic um, or dangerous. And um, if, if a product is toxic, as you see there, um, that means that it's poisonous or lethal when ingested. Um, that will be labeled on the side of the cleaning product, as well as if a product is flammable or corrosive, um, which will be labeled as dangerous. Um, also, um, there will be instructions on the um, side of the label or side of the cleaning product on how to handle and storage of that product, and then what happens um, if you come in contact um, with that product, um, how, to, how to instructions for first aid. Um, certain sub substances um, are also labeled um, uh, as poisonous, um, and, and you'll see those as well. A note 
here is that um, all of these products, um, and you'll see on the slide, um, are labeled um, and or are um, based on a male that is 180 pounds. So um, that can be challenging as we know that when we're cleaning, um, not only 180 pound men are, are using these products. Um, another piece um, is with safe storage. So making sure that, um, you know, you, you are, are putting these products away um, and they're not uh, being exposed to children. So it, one, on the first slide, um, I also talked about um, products and their, um, the concerns in terms of the environment. So in using all of these all of these cleaning products, if you've gone to the grocery store, you know that we have hundreds and thousands of products to choose from. And not only in an average home are we utilizing, um, it, uh, some of the data says that a, an average home has anywhere between 20 to 30 products. Not only are we utilizing a number of different products, um, we may be utilizing them together. So cautionary um, uh, recommendations is to make sure that we're not, um, uh, unbeknownst to us, mixing chemicals um, that may be um, even flammable or explosive. So looking at um, utilizing uh, uh, products, um, oh, and then one other note um, is making sure um, that we are disposing of them properly. So, um, Brendan, if you want to go to the next slide, um, how, do we, how do we make safer choices? Um, one of the first recommendations that I would offer um, is to simply, as I said, um, look at the number of products that you're utilizing. Um, how many products do you need in your home? Um, many of us probably have products that we've purchased that we don't even use anymore. Um, and when we're looking at products, um, we, we probably only need one disinfectant and then um, a number of different types of cleaners. Um, most people are just using a general cleaner, maybe a glass cleaner, um, and then a bathroom cleaner. And what's great is that many of those cleaners um, can be made out of alternative um, ingredients. And the slide um, that you see is an alternative cleaning ingredient list. I did not include recipes here um, for those all, all make your own cleaners, um, but certainly if you just do a simple Google search, there are a number of different items or different recipes that can be found with these items that are on the list. So if you look down on the prod all the way to the left, the products, um, baking soda, borax, white vinegar, vinegar cornstarch, and um, a citrus certainly can make terrific cleaners in your home. Um, one of the easiest things, um, which is not only making a safer product, but also even curbing food waste, is that you can take peels of a lemon or a lime and just put them in vinegar um, and let that sit for a week or two and create um, a cleaner that is very effective in removing grease um, and from your stove. Um, or around your house, and it also smells wonderful. It costs less, um, and is super safe um, for anyone uh, to be utilizing. Um, other things that you can do, Brendan, if you want to change the slide away uh, again, is, um, as I mentioned, um, stop using un unnecessary products, but really prioritize the cleaners. So I'm going to talk a little bit about verified products, which can sometimes be a little bit more expensive, but certainly um, making sure that you prioritize the cleaners that you use for infants and elderly, um, and specifically pregnant women. Um, so making sure that you may choose a product um, as a disinfectant that is a little bit safer for those audiences um, or for those individuals. Again, I mentioned making your own. Uh, there's a ton of other, there's a ton of cleaning products that you can make, um, and I didn't mention all of them, but certainly um, baking soda and vinegar are a great option. Research, so I know you probably are on this call because uh, you wanna know the, the answer for the, the one or two items that you're trying to um, switch out. And the great news is that there's so many easy ways now to be able to um, verify the, the items that you are purchasing. And right now there's terrific tools like EWG and DetoxMe. Um, EWG has, is a consumer guide that is an online both database and also there's an app. 
that has um, about over 1,500 verified products right now. And what's terrific about them is they provide both the environmental and health um, guides right on the, on the list, and as well as some of the, most of the chemicals that are in, included in those cleaners are listed. Detox Me is a great app as well if you're trying to prioritize um, safer cleaners and safer products for yourself. It's um, designed by the Silent Spring Institute and is a great resource as well. So, and finally, just on there, share, get involved, share that information. So it's always lovely when you can be able to say, hey, I made this great um, uh, cleaner or I buy this verified product and it's really been useful. Sharing that out with your you know, family, friends, and in your social ne networks helps as well. Next slide. So I'm gonna switch gears now to the personal care products. Um, we definitely um, have done a little bit of work here with C2I, but um, looking at the number of products that the average person um, is using, you can go ahead, Brendan, on to the next slide. Um, it is um, uh, said that about, uh, for women, women are using about 12 to 25 products a day on themselves, um, which is about 515 different chemicals um, that is being that are being put um, on uh, on their bodies, in their hair, on their faces. Um, and teenage girls um, are not much less. The average teenage girl is using 17 products a day. Um, men are a little bit less, and that men are on average using about six products a day. Um, but still that's 174 unique ingredients. So when we think about the number of chemicals that people are using, we talk about this for personal care products in terms of body burden. Um, we are um, definitely exposing regularly ourselves to chemicals um, that we know for, for many of them may have an impact on health. Next slide, Brendan. Um, so what are the concerns with some of these, um, with some of the chemicals that are included in personal care products? Um, we recognize that the, red, the um, labeling and the regulation for personal care products is much outdated. There has been, been there have been some um, smaller updates, but the FDA regulates personal care products um, and and hasn't um, hasn't um, uh, uh, done a full review. Ultimately, cosmetics and ingredients are not tested prior to sale. Um, in the U.S. right now, um, only 11 ingredients have, the, have been banned or limited uh, within the personal care product industry, where um, if you compare that to Europe, there's about, um, I think last time we checked about 1,100 chemicals or ingredients that had been banned. So um, right now, um, they cannot, FDA does not um, recall products containing um, uh, toxic chemicals, nor do um, can uh, they compel companies to provide the health effects data about their ingredients on their products. Um, companies themselves are responsible for ensuring that the product safety, um, that there is product safety before they go to the market. Um, so that is something that um, we, we want to pay attention to in recognizing um, that many of these products are not text tested for safety. What are some of the chemicals that we're concerned about within products? Um, I've listed um, formaldehyde and parabens, which are right under um, on, those, on that chart, the orange and the blue. Um, that you may actually be able to find on the side um, of products and are listed and you can see there where they are found in that chart. Um, we are um, also, um, you will not see phthalates on the side. Um, the phthalate, phthalates are, is an ingredient that is used um, in many um, perfumes, so it's, or, and, you'll, and you'll see that on a label um, under fragrance. Um, phthalates will actually come under um, fragrance. Um, so what it, what you can do, uh, you see all those you see all those uh, chemicals listed. How do I actually choose safer products when I uh, there's a this huge list of chemicals that I want to avoid? Um, next slide, Brendan. 
the first, the first thing that you can do is to just simplify, um, just like with the cleaning products, simplify um, the number of products that you use. So eliminate any unnecessary products and, and skip the ones um, that have those really long ingredient lists um, and try to choose fewer synthetic chemicals. Um, as I said, um, Phthalates, which are listed under fragrance, are a known um, endocrine disruptor, um, and we really want to make sure that we limit the amount that is that we're putting on our body. So, if you can skip a product that has fragrance on the label, um, you're you're doing uh, uh, you're doing yourself a favor. Um, so, what else can you do? Um, you know, you can't make you know, ladies, you can't make your own mascara, but certainly, or maybe you can. Um, I haven't done. I haven't heard of anyone doing that yet. But you certainly can um, make your own salt scrubs and, and purchase body oils um, that are very simple and, and make things out of simple and, and organic ingredients. Um, there's certainly a number um, of websites and looking at um, how to make your own, but a simple sugar scrub um, is very easy with a coconut oil and sugar. Research, again, EWG, um, it, as I mentioned, is that terrific site where you can go in and they have a whole personal care product database as well. And then Think Dirty is another um, site that looks at personal, the personal care product industry only. Again, we do recommend to share this as best you can um, out with your, um, your friends and your family as you have found products, companies that you trust, um, and things that work for you. Next slide, Brendan. Lastly, I'm going to um, discuss the household, some household products, um, chemicals of concern um, in household products and what you can do. I didn't, um, I know for many people, um, uh, these are other changes that you're trying to make within the home, so I, I didn't want to leave these off of the list. Um, uh, Brendan, next slide. So what are we? What are the chemicals of concern in household products? Um, the first one, PFOA, um, you may have heard of um, with Hussock Falls in New York State. Um, PFOA is an industrial surfacant that um, is used in many different products in your home. Um, it is um, it is uh, in stain resistant carpet in cookware and Teflon. Um, if you've recently seen uh, the movie Dark Water with Mark Ruffalo, the, that is the chemical that's in that movie um, that we're trying to uh, not use and, and use less of. Uh, we know that um, uh, it's also in microwave popcorn bags um, and certain other plastics. Um, these are, uh, this chemical is something that we're concerned in concerned about and um, want to choose products that do not contain it. Also, flame retardants. Um, flame retardants, um, just as they sound, are chemicals such as PVDE that um, are used um, to make something um, flame resistant. Um, it's added to furniture, certainly carpets, other foam products, um, some textiles. Um, it's also in electronics. Um, and they're, they're added to make them less likely to catch, uh, make the product less likely to catch fire and burn. Finally, looking again um, at phthalates, um, phthalates are um, uh, found in vinyl and, and products that are made from PVC. Luckily, we're seeing a lot less of that, such as in curtain, uh, shower curtains, um, in children products, and, and in, in flooring. Um, so many companies are, 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 are moving away from PVC, um, but there, we do still see um, vinyl being used around the home. Um, so what are the health concerns when we're looking, you know, when we're looking at these chemicals, um, each one of these have um, definitely um, um, concerns. Uh, we know that with PFOA, um, it is linked to um, increased um, ADHD. We're looking at um, often earlier or later on site of puberty for girls, um, increased infertility, um, and is related to other many other um, health um, impacts um, uh, if, if exposed to in high doses. Um, next slide. Um, so, um, what can you do? Um, and the list is very long, which is which is great. Um, and this is certainly not extensive. Um, there are many other uh, things you can do and, and choices you can make. I tried to prioritize. Um, you will not always see a th the phthalate um, uh, 
listed on a product, um, but certainly avoiding PVC or choosing a PVC free product. Um, avoiding vinyl where you can in your home um, and choosing products that are vinyl free. Um, choosing shower curtains um, that are made from safer plastics like um, um, listed there, EVA or PEVA, um, P-E-V-A, um, or choosing fabric. So using uh, an, uh, and choosing a natural fabric, whether it be for your carpet um, or choosing curtains um, that are, um, are made from safer products. Um, so something like a wool, um, or a wool blend carpet um, is not going to require a stain resistant um, or it, it will not um, have a stain resistant um, layer on it. Also looking for um, leather or um, choosing cotton um, is going to be a, a, a better choice. Looking at cookware and cooking utensils. Um, there are many other choices. Instead of using a non-stick um, Teflon pan, you can choose items such as uncoated metal. Um, there are great options now um, with silicone and glass, um, and well as, as well as your trusty old uh, cast iron pan. Um, the other thing, uh, while well, I was joking at the beginning of the session about um, not cleaning as well, um, we. We see that these chemicals are showing up in, how, are often found in household dust. And um, so ridding yourself of, of dust in your home, as much as you probably didn't want to hear this at lunch, uh, the, uh, ridding yourself uh, and, and vacuuming regularly, um, doing a quick um, a dust of your home um, it, as frequently as possible is going to reduce your exposure to these chemicals. Um, as I mentioned, avoiding stain resistant materials or, or uh, materials that um, have an added stain resistant feature to them, specifically with furniture, but also with carpets. Um, and when you're um, purchasing clothes or using or um, uh, buying other fabrics as well. Um, I think that is the summary. That's if you want to go to the next slide, um, Brendan. I um, I would certainly love to open it up to Q and A. I know I went through all of that very quickly, and it was a very high level um, view. Uh, but I would love to take some questions if we have time for that. Yeah, definitely, we do here. Um, and as we get into that, I also want to ask folks, if you have, um, Kate had mentioned earlier about kind of making some products, if you have any recipes that you use or any other things like that or any tips or tricks for greener cleaning around your house or products, feel free to type them into the chat box and maybe we can inspire others with some of them. Ooh. So love that. Great idea. The first question we have here, um, most of this focused on the health aspects, which is what we were focusing okay. on, but it um, gets into packaging and waste reduction. Are there any, Ooh. there are a lot of products out there coming on the market that are pro, um, they're powders or sort of dissolvable strips or something like that to get away from plastic waste. Are there any kind of blanket concerns you've seen with those? No, not off the top of my head. I haven't seen any blanket. Um, concerns. Yeah, I'm very excited about some of the emerging um, products that are out there. I actually have a call with one of those companies next week. Um, there's a lot of them that are using tablets to make cleaners. We're learning more about them. We're very excited for those options. Um, and um, so, so no concerns right now. Um, the other thing that comes off in a, a lot of uh, in a lot of these trains that we do, the great recommendation in terms of packaging and also safety, um, is using the classic bar of soap <laughs> when we're talking about cleaners and personal care products. Um, you know, just using a bar of soap um, versus buying a gel. You know, and so many of us love those shower gels. And um, but you know, thinking about the packaging is a, a a significant thing to, to take in and into consideration when we're looking at environmental impact. So where you can use less packaging and have a safe product, um, the win-win. Definitely. And um, bar shampoos as well, I'll put a, a plug in for as well. Mm -hmm. I've been using that for a while. It's kind of hard to find, but I think it's becoming more common. And they also have bar conditioners that work well now as well. Um, so other yeah. things out there. Um, so a comment here, um, somebody has heard of people using burnt almonds and coconut oil, coconut oil for mascara and eyeliner. Have you heard of that before? 
Whoa! No, I haven't. That's that's going to blow my mind. That gets that that's for me saying that you can't make your own mascara. <laughs> um, no, I haven't heard that. Um, but I would love to learn more. If you want to provide some instructions, I would I would love to test that in my own home. Um, I have not. I had not yet heard of that. Yep. Um, so, what are some of the issues with stain resistant materials? If you can get into that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, they want to get into that, certainly. So what we're finding, um, so stain, so stain resistant, um, the chemical that is used in, in stain resistant, um, uh, uh, sorry, excuse me, I just choked, hold on. Uh, so the chemical that's used in um, stain resistant carpet um, is PFOA. It has been found um, in, in many, in many of the stain resistant products that are used, um, both in carpets and um, for couches and many other items. And um, so I mentioned very briefly about some of the health concerns that, and studies that have been linked to PFOA. Um, if you look at um, the years and years worth of research with, with that chemical, um, we know that um, it is linked to many health um, issues. Um, the, the good news is that um, the exposure is very, very small. Um, but what our concern is, is if you're, you know, sitting on a, a stain resistant couch and you have a stain resistant um, <laughs> carpet and it's in your curtains and you're wearing a stain resistant shirt, um, that actually um, that I increases the amount of PFOA that is maybe not only being exposed to your skin, but is also, as I mentioned, in household dust. Um, and while a full grown adult um, may not um, be at risk for some of the health um, effects from just that exposure, we don't know the other exposures that you've been, uh, that you've had. So um, maybe you have other exposures and you're more genetically inclined to um, things like um, uh, infertility or um, thyroid disease is some of the things that I had mentioned. Um, but um, also when you think about dust in your home, um, the the littlest the littlest of among us, so our, our you know twelve to eighteen month old children um, spend most of their time um, walking around on our floors and ingesting that dust. Um, so we really want to make sure that we are reducing the amount um, of these chemicals in our lives, um, and specifically um, the chemicals that that are in that stain resistant um, uh, material. Um, I certainly can share out more information too about stain resistant uh, materials. Um, that's my brief answer. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a difference between white vinegar and apple cider vinegar? Well, there's a difference. Yeah, there's certainly a difference. One's made with apple cider or apples and one isn't. But um, certainly in terms of cleaning, um, my preference is to use a, a vinegar and then to flavor it. Um, I have heard of people cleaning with apple cider vinegar that like that, um, that like the scent, and it is effective. Um, but I've heard, I, I, we generally recommend white vinegar. I think um, the shelf life is a little bit longer, um, but both, both, both of them last very long. Um, but I, I definitely recommend the general vinegar because you can add your own scents to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, this next person said that um, instead of Febreze, uh, they use essential oils mixed with water for um, kind of um, yeah. and freshness. Yeah, so certainly essential oils are a great recommendation. I was actually just on a, a webinar last week um, with the EPA where a question came out in terms of VOCs and thinking about um, air quality. One of the things that you just want to be careful with, with essential, even with essential oils, which can be safer or which are safer, um, they still can trigger um, asthma. So just being sensitive that any odor um, can be a trigger. We do um, we do know that, and we try to teach that um, uh, no odor is sometimes the best odor. So no odor can be clean as well. Um, and then one other thing that I've I've heard for an air freshener or that I've utilized for an air freshener um, is the same kind of concept, but using you can eat, actually just use baking soda, um, put it in a pretty tin, um, and maybe um, drill some holes on the top of the tin if it's a if it uh, has a closed top, um, and drop some essential oils into that. 
it's fantastic because it smells great, but the baking odor or the baking soda actually, just like it does in your fridge, will absorb odors in, in small spaces. So I put those in my closets, I put them underneath my shoe, my shoe um, cabinet here, and then um, in my kitchen and in my bathroom as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really good point about the no scent being fine as well for cleaning. Uh, I think mm -hmm. we're pretty predetermined to think that if something smells citrusy, it's clean. Um, I was mm -hmm. in my juicer the other day and had some citrus in there, and I had not cleaned my kitchen, and it just smelled clean. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I still had to clean it, but um, it's just there's something about that connection that's been made um, yeah. that I think yeah. people to to get used to the fact that if there is no odor, that can be just as clean. Right. It's a big thing. Right, exactly. Yeah, and and certainly if and, and for some people that have been using highly scented um, products for so long, there's a connection there. Um, we used to do a lot of training with childcare providers who, um, per regulation, had been using bleach for years, right? So they actually, you know, connected bleach with clean, and it takes a little bit of time to kind of switch that over. Um, and certainly for people that need that smell, um, citrus is really safe, of course, and is a great um, addition to, to vinegar or to other products. Mm -hmm. um, so one comment here is that leather tan uses chromium, uh, which is a carcinogen. Uh, mm -hmm. So something for folks to be aware of um, when they're looking at leather. Yeah, products. that's a great, that's a great product or a great uh, comment. and. Certainly, choosing safe leather, um, which we I guess I, we could do a whole webinar I guess on that is <laughs> um, you know making sure that the products that you're choosing are are safe as well. And there's some great resources for how to how to choose um, a, a better leather. Mm -hmm. uh, could you list some more examples of items that are flame retardants? Sure. Yeah. So when you think about um, uh, there's been a number of different products that are um, that have added flame um, retardant chemicals um, I've I've noted a couple of them which are um, anything with foam so if you think about your um, couch the foam um, uh, pieces in your couch um, flame retardant chemicals that are on cur curtains and in carpets um, the other thing um, that is um, often that is flame retardant um, and is used flame retardant chemicals is your mattress um, so um, mattresses um, have a, a flame, flame retardant chemical added to them, and also um, it is still being added to children's um, uh, clothing, um, their night nightgowns, um, and their sleeping gear is still being um, at, that's still being added for items that are loose, not for um, the ones that are tight to their body, they don't, they, they no longer have um, uh, flame retardants added to those. Um, so I think that's a pretty general, general list, um, but I could provide more. Um, but it, and I, oh, I mentioned the clothing. So um, uh, we often will have that same chemical in some of our clothing as well. Mm -hmm. Another comment here is citric acid is good for removing soap scum and descaling. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, so adding the citric acid to um, to a bathroom cleaner, um, whether it be vinegar that you choose or another product, um, is really effective in in the bathroom. Um, and and really, especially if you let it sit, if you let the peel sit for a little bit longer, and really let that that um, acid get in into the product. Um, like I said, when I said it removes grease, um, it certainly is fantastic in that as well. Um, I've been using, I, it was in the chart on one of my slides, but I've also been using white vinegar um, in place of liquid fabric softener for years. It's very effective as well. That is a really good tip that I'm making a note of. <laughs> um, so um, somebody else made a comment here about concentrated products. We were talking about um, packaging mm -hmm. before. Are there any concerns with using concentrates because of the fact that they're more concentrated? Um, so you have more <laughs> um, some of the yeah. chemicals in there and other things. Are there special handling yeah. requirements or anything like that? Yeah, no, not not that we've seen or that I've looked at, but certainly my, you know, the only other the only comment I would make with concentrated products is, or even cleaning products in general, 
is um, to, to make sure that you're using the right amount of something. So if it's concentrated and you're making your own, make sure that you follow the directions, um, that you're utilizing the right amount. Um, if you're mixing your own, make sure you're, you're utilizing um, the right mix for the right job. Um, that's really going to be important. Um, but in terms of concentrated um, solutions and cleaners, um, it's a great way um, to reduce the amount of packaging that is going out. Um, so no, no major concerns there. Mm -hmm. So this next question, I'm going to preface by saying that we're working on an EO4 spec on this now, so we'll have more things to talk about it later. Um, but are there any top-level concerns about clothing materials or recycled clothing? Um, so not, no, not when I, when I think about recycling text, you know, when you're basically recycling or reusing textiles, um, certainly it's the same concern as when you're purchasing a, a clothing, um, you may be able to tell a little bit more what, what, um, you know, it's going to be labeled if it has a flame retardant, um, on it, it's required right now. So I would imagine this question, um, goes to, how would you be able to tell um, what what was sourced? Um, I don't have a great answer for that. Um, so the only concern would be that there'd be you know pieces of a of an old flame retardant um, uh, you know nightgown that's now in your shirt. Um, uh, so so maybe yes, yeah, some small concern. Um, you have more information on that, Brendan, as well. Uh, yeah, we'll be sharing more on that. Um, we might even make that one of our um, lunchtime learning seminars um, come summer next fall. That's a pretty good idea. Mm -hmm. um, so another comment that came in here is that um, you can't count on one brand being good for all of their products, mm -hmm. more or less, um, and to have to look at all of them specifically. Some might have um, some chemicals in them. Other products from the same brand might have others and just be cognizant of that. Um, and to not just think that when you buy that one product that it's going to have the same yeah. uh, properties yeah. for all of them. Yeah, certainly. I, that is a great comment and um, it reminds me of a little note I made that I didn't say. Um, certainly, I, I always say buy from companies that you trust. Um, but then I, I follow, I should have followed that up with and said, you know, certainly um, just because um, one company made a safe product does not mean that all their products are safe. So. Um, back to the recommendation, making sure that if you have a product that you really like, um, putting it through um, EWG and making sure um, that, you know, that you know the ingredients that are in it and that it's safe. And, um, you know, I did, it, you saw, I didn't make note of it, but on the slide, um, I, I kind of brushed by it, but choosing third-party certified products, so we um, certainly recommend and um, EPA's um, safe product standards. We know um, that if it has that logo on it, it's going to be a safe choice. Um, again, still looking through and doing your research is important, um, but choosing a third-party um, certified product is always the way to go if you're going to make if you're going to if you're going to buy a product. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to combine two questions that came in here: is what are the issues with bleach, and what are some good alternatives? Yeah, so the alternative, I'll start with the alternative. The alternative um, is um, uh, borax, which is a safer um, version of bleach. Um, it was on the, um, on the chart that I provided in the, in the slides. So borax um, can do much of what um, the bleach does. So it cleans and deodorizes. It also can serve as a disinfectant and softens water um, and can do, you know, clean floors and all of that. The issue with, with bleach um, is that um, it can irritate um, at very, uh, in small amounts, can irritate um, the nose, eyes, and throat, um, particularly for children. Um, and then it can also uh, trigger asthma for people that have asthma um, and um, is very corrosive. So we're, we, we do try, particularly in childcare environments, um, we're switching um, and moving away from bleach. Mm -hmm. Um, so here's two other questions that came in is um, there's a lot of copper nonstick um, cookware that's now coming on the market and being advertised. Um, are there any issues with that and do you have any recommendations for other types of nonstick cookware to look at that doesn't include um, the perfluorinated chemicals? Yeah. 
So um, first, the first part of that, I have very, I've looked at the coated copper cookware very briefly. It was many years ago. I did some research and dove into them. Um, there, so the copper, a copper um, coated cookware pan can still utilize some of those same, um, whether it be Teflon or nonstick. So first of all, make sure that um, you're not utilizing that. Um, also, the coated material, um, like and like many of the nonstick pans, um, the protective layer um, can get damaged, scoured very easily, um, which is why I'm always going to go um, more towards, um, you know, stainless steel or, um, uh, you know, iron, cast iron. Um, was that the second part of the question, Brendan, what else I would recommend? <laughs> Yeah. I think that was the second part of the question, right? Yeah, yeah. so certainly on my end, um, I've been using stainless steel for years. Um, one of the, the major issues that I hear is I can't, you know, but how am I going to cook my eggs? Um, and I will say that you can cook, you can cook an egg on, uh, on stainless steel. Um, it's all about the right heat um, and making sure that um, you have something in the, in the pan in and in a, in a medium, not too high heat. Um, and that way you're not scraping little bits of your egg all over the place. But um, uh, definitely staying away um, from that nonstick and Teflon coated pan is the first uh, is the first thing to look at um, when choosing it if you're if you're out buying new new cook, cookware. Um, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would I have just generally avoided um, copper. Um, there is um, you know some some evidence that copper um, uh, can you know build up in the body and has some uh, may have some other health. Um, concerns as well. So I've, I've stayed just as a follow up, um, have stayed away from copper in general. Mm -hmm. um, so this comment here, um, this person has heard that there have been some lawsuits with companies that are promising greener cleaning ingredients. Um, sounds like maybe some greenwashing issues there. Um, do you have any knowledge about anything that's come up like that or any um, kind of guidance for people when kind of navigating kind of claims? Yeah, so um, I know that there was one, they might be referencing Clorox, um, that, that was a, that's the most famous one that I've heard of, which was their Green Works line, uh, which was not, you know, natural or naturally de derived. <laughs> so um, I think they, lo I think Clorox lost that. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, that is, I think, one of the most famous ones that they alleged. Um, when my recommendation um, is really into any company's um, claims and really do the, the quick research, as I said, a great way to know is that Safer Choice logo um, and then to, to look really at those uh, websites and apps to just double check um, that, it, that it lines up with actually um, being both good for the environment, but also healthy for our bodies as well. Mm -hmm. Are there any concerns with aluminum pans or deodorants that include aluminum in them? Yeah, so there has been, there has certainly um, a number of studies that show, um, you know, that the concern with aluminum in our deodorant, um, um, and again, I'm not, uh, I'm certainly not anything, uh, a doctor, but uh, aluminum uh, antiperspirants um, does, uh, supposedly the aluminum um, can prevent um, uh, toxics from actually being expelled from our body and, and clog up nymph, uh, lymph nodes um, is the concern, um, which then can be linked um, to increasing uh, uh, risk for breast cancer in women. Um, so the aluminum that, that is used in deodorant does get absorbed into our skin. Um, there's some connection between aluminum and that affecting, um, you know, the, the blood-brain barrier in our brain and possibly linked with um, Alzheimer's, the early onset of Alzheimer's. Um, so certainly, uh, um, you know, avoiding aluminum containing antiperspirant in your deodorant is a great thing um, to look into. And the great news is that there's a number of different 
deodorants on the market that are that are also fairly affordable um, that you can find. Um, and I would definitely recommend going to EWG and Detox Me looking at the options for um, brands that do not have aluminum in them. Mm -hmm. Um, so, how do you clean stainless steel, and is it hard to clean stainless steel? No way. You can just <laughs> uh, use a little metal scrubber. Um, it's actually way easier than a lot of the pots and pans uh, that I've used previously. Um, you know, you want to keep them in good working order, but um, uh, definitely cast iron is a little bit more tricky. Um, you need to season that with oil. You don't want to get it super wet. You can't scrub it. Um, so a cast iron pan needs to be um, treated a little bit differently, but no, stainless steel is super easy. You can throw it in the dishwasher um, and certainly just use a wire brush on it and it cleans off great. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have some uh, cleaning or personal care products that you haven't used and you're looking to get rid of them, um, are there, what are the best recommendations for responsibly disposing of them? Well, the, the quick answer is that it depends on where you live. <laughs> um, certainly, um, we don't want to see them just dumped down uh, the drain. Here in Monroe County, where I, where I am located in Rochester, we're really lucky to have a resource called the Eco Park, which is um, our regional facility, and they will take half-used cleaning products. Um, I, struggle, I struggle constantly with recommendations to donate it to other people that may use, use it because I don't think that that solves the problem either. Um, but certainly if there's people that are still using the product and want it, um, donating it to them can help. Um, but looking in to see where the safe, um, if, if and, and that's something that we can provide to our bet um, after is to find out regionally if, if you're in an area and you're looking to get rid of your products. Um, uh, making sure that you do so in a safe way. Um, Brendan, do you have any other additional DEC resources for that? Yeah, I mean, with everything, when it comes down to materials management here, it's it's check with your local municipality or waste hauler and see if there's resources in your area. So what I would suggest yeah. is uh, no matter where you live, call up either your waste hauler or your local municipality uh, and ask if they have any resources for it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Great. So we've got time for one more question here. Um, are you aware of any concerns with sodium benzenate, which seems to be in a lot of skincare products? Yeah, so that's a you're really that's a hard one because <laughs> I don't want to. I I think I have the right answer. answer. Um, but so sodium benzenate is a um, is something that is used in a lot of um, products. And right off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Um, I know that there's there it has been connected to inflam I think risk of inflammation, obesity, allergies, things like that, and is a potential carcinogen. Um, so certainly, if you can avoid when you when you go on to EWG, it's in most products it may not be listed. Some products it will be listed. If you can avoid that, um, I certainly would recommend it. Mm -hmm. And with that, we're out of time for today. Um, thank you very much, Kate. This was fantastic. Oh, great. Um, I appreciate it, and I am so glad we had uh, time for a number of questions and answers. I really appreciated that, and thanks for setting it up, Brendan. Yeah, um, and everybody, uh, thanks for joining today. We will have our next Lunchtime Learning webinar. Again, that's March 10th. Uh, again at noon, and that will be on uh, climate-friendly refrigeration and air conditioning. Thanks a lot, everybody, and if you would like to see a recording of this uh, to, or send it to anybody else that might be interested, it will be up on the Green New York website in the next couple days. Thanks a lot, and have a good one.